In today's video, you're gonna learn how to make a metal 3D logo in After Effects using no plugins. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and today we'll be making this metal logo animation entirely in After Effects. And you won't have to download any third-party plugins to be able to pull this effect off. In fact, if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you have everything you need to pull this off. And if you really wanna follow along, you can actually download the scene file down below. We'll link it up here on YouTube, or we'll also have it available at Grayscale Gorilla if you wanna follow along with this and other After Effects uh, scene files. All right, with that, let's head on into After Effects and let's get started. All right, here we are in After Effects. Let's get started. We have a new composition we need to make. You could either use this button down here or just click new composition. And we're gonna make it 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second. Somewhere around five to 10 seconds is fine. Let's just open this up and get started. All right, now if you wanna follow along with our logo, with the Grayscale Gorilla logo, you could download the project file down below and it'll come with the logo and also the uh, HDR we're gonna use a little bit later. Uh, if you wanna use your own logo, you could do that. Or if you wanna use type, you could just go up here and type in whatever you want. And it, either way, it's, this will work in any um, type of text or logo you want. In this case, we're gonna use our Grayscale Gorilla logo. I'm gonna double click in our project window and head on over and grab our Grayscale Gorilla, Gorilla logo that was made in Illustrator. And once we bring this in and drag it into the uh, project, you're gonna see it's uh, pretty small. And if your logo is small, you could scale it up or down depending on the size of it. And uh, just wanna fill the screen for now. And you can see it's not quite black, so we could see our logo here, but it's also a little bit low res. So the first thing we wanna do is click this button right here, which will snap it into high resolution. It'll just uh, give the pixel data as much to work with as possible here. And um, the next thing we need to do, if you're working with a logo, uh, is right click on your Illustrator file and click this button right here. It says, create shapes from vector layer. Boom. Now, After Effects just made outlines out of your vector logo, which basically means you could delete this from the scene file and you have this much more um, uh, usable piece of, of vector footage rather than having this Illustrator file. Now, if you're just following along with the text, you don't have to do this. Um, and there, in fact, there's just one more thing we need to do if you're using a logo, which is come in here and go to your contents, open up the group. And if your logo is not white like mine, go to where your fills are and just change it to white. Okay. Now, no matter where you're following along, you should get to this point where you have some white text that is uh, filling the screen. Now from here, uh, you want to make sure that, first of all, that your layer is 3D. Now we make any layer in 3D, um, any After Effects layer 3D by clicking this button right here. But you can see if I rotate around that it's not true 3D, it's just this flat 3D plane. But we're gonna make this chunky 3D. And the first way we're gonna do that is to make sure we're using the right 3D engine. So what I want you to do is come up to composition, go to composition settings, head on over to 3D renderer, and make sure that this says Cinema 4D. Um, there's total uses for these other ones. I use classic 3D all the time, but for this chunky 3D, you want to make sure you're using this, Cinema 4D. Then go to your options and turn down your uh, render options way down. Um, and all this is doing is making sure that the 3D effect that you're looking at is rendering as fast as possible while we set up our scene. And then later when we go to render it, we could turn this back up. So let's just go all the way down to one. Let's click okay. And now let's make this text, this chunky 3D text and not just this flat 3D layer. All right, uh, I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut that we're gonna use a lot in this tutorial and that's hit A twice, A, A on your keyboard. With any layer selected, it's gonna open up your 3D layers. Now from here, you can open up this uh, extrusion depth and just turn it up. You can see as soon as we turn on our extrusion depth, it's making our logo 3D. So let's just make it a little bit 3D so you can see it in the viewport here. And we're gonna do one other thing while we're here, which is turn up the bevels. So go to your bevel style, go to convex, and let's just tone this down a little bit. We don't wanna go too crazy. Depending on the scale of your logo, you could dial it into taste, but we're just adding a little bit of bevels and you'll see why here in just a bit. Okay, so now technically, 
we have this 3D logo. But if we click off the layer, you can see it's not, there's no reflections, there's no lighting, and texturing and lighting are always key when it comes to making 3D look good, whether you're using After Effects or any other 3D program. So how do we make this look way better? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. If you followed some of our other After Effects tutorials, you may see me come up here and grab a light. And while that is a good way to do it, uh, you end up um, with a slightly different effect than what we're trying to make today. So there's making a light, really simple. You can move your light around. You can see we have our nice little bevels here happening. We have some depth going on. That's all good. But what we're really trying to build is this reflective, glossy logo. And so to do that, I'm just gonna turn off our light and instead import this HDR. Now, uh, it's, it's, a, it's technically a .exr. We won't get into all the technical details, but what this is, if you're not familiar with an HDR image, is uh, a reflection map that you can use to relight your scene. And this is from our uh, one of our HDRI packs we sell at Grayscale Gorilla, and you could get this for free if you just download the scene file. Uh, and if you want more of these types of HDRs, we sell them over at our site, but you won't need to do that to follow along today. So just let's install this, or just let's open it, okay? It'll come into our project, and let's bring it into our uh, composition, and you can see it just comes in as a regular image. Now, we're not gonna use this as a regular image. We're instead trying to wrap this around our object. Remember I said these, these EXRs and these HDRs are, are light and reflection data that we can then use to relight our object. And the real way to do that is to right click on uh, this HDR. And we want to turn it into um, a, I always forget where this is, there it is, environment layer. So click environment layer. And now your HDR is affecting the environment. So remember I said that lighting and texturing go together to make 3D look good. And we have the lighting set up, but we don't have the textures. In, in other words, our Grayscale Gorilla logo or whatever logo you're using is set up to, to catch lights right now and not reflections. So let's go into our logo. Remember, if, if, if you don't see these settings, you could hit AA really fast on your keyboard, AA. It'll open up your 3D settings here. And then you can come down here and say reflection intensity. Let's crank it all the way up. We went to 100% intensity and let's click off of our logo and check out what we got. We now have a fully reflective logo. And don't forget, these bevels are what makes this look good. If we did not add those bevels, in fact, I'm just gonna turn them off. If we did not add those bevels, look at the difference, right? Those bevels made all the difference in, in this logo. So let me undo that. Here's our nice logo. And you can now you can grab this logo. I'm gonna hit W for rotate on my keyboard and you could rotate around. And you can see now that this is a fully 3D logo um, that has nice reflections and all this stuff going on. And now we can animate this the same way we would any 2D layer or any fake 3D layer, if you've used this before in After Effects, to create a flying logo or a logo flying in from the screen or just moving anywhere. You could rotate it around. And that's what we're gonna build. So from now on, now that we have some reflections, some logos, we're just animating this to create our logo animation. And so if you're familiar with animating in, in After Effects, you can imagine the possibilities with this. And remember, this is all built in here. So what are the other ways we could do to make this look better and start to build our animation? Well, one way is to uh, affect the reflection sharpness. Right now, you can see that everything is fully a uh, sharp reflection, almost like it's a mirror. And if we reduce the reflection sharpness more to like 50%, you could see that you're gonna get more and more blurry reflections. Now, we might have to grab our logo and rotate it just a little bit, try to catch a little bit of light, and, and you'll be able to see the difference. Now, oh, almost grabbed it. Let's rotate it around. Almost, Let's, I'm trying to catch it right in the middle here. There it is. Okay, so see now, the gradient from no light to light is blurry. If I if I put this back at 100, you're gonna see it's gonna be a, a, a sharp edge, okay? And this really um, helps sell the 3D effect. In fact, if I go all the way to the side here and I start to see these reflections, you'll really start to see this. So uh, let's go to 80% 80, 80 see what that looks like. 
that's a little bit blurry. Let's go to 50. Okay, and so you can see more and more blurriness will make these um, kind of blurry reflection effects in your logo. Now, it's a little bit grainy, and the, re the way we're gonna fix that is when we go to render, we're gonna crank up the render settings, and that will allow us to, to get this a lot sharper, but we're gonna animate this with gonna low render settings, and then at the end, we'll, we'll crank it back up. So how do we get this thing animated? Okay, so let's hit R on our keyboard, and find our final resting place for where this logo is gonna be. So I'm feeling pretty good right here. Let's go ahead and animate this logo going from where it is now towards the camera and, and make this like flying animation. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is, is make a camera. So let's go ahead up to layer, new camera. And uh, in your camera settings, you want to make your focal length something like I don't know, let's go with like a 40 millimeter lens. And what this is doing is creating um, the type of lens that you're using to look through. That sounds kind of obvious, but there are big differences between a 40 millimeter lens and a 100 millimeter lens, especially when you're using in, in an After Effects with 3D. Now this 40 is gonna make things look a little bit wide. and It'll allow us to get some really cool effects as the logo gets closer to our camera. So let's go ahead and find our final place where the logo will, will kind of settle down. And to me, I think the logo, first of all, needs to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna grab S for scale on our logo and just scale it down. Almost everything you could do with a regular 3D layer, as far as moving it around, you could do with this 3D layer. So let's call that roughly where we want it to end, okay? And then I don't like how thick this logo is, so I'm gonna hit AA and turn down our extrusion uh, a little bit, and that'll make it, I think, more readable. Now, um, let's go ahead and grab our logo and set a position and rotation keyframe somewhere around three seconds. And so for that, I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna hit R and set um, orientation keyframe. Okay, that is representing where the logo ends up. So now let's go all the way back to the zero position and kind of give it a start frame. So in this case, I'm gonna grab the, uh, I hit V on my keyboard to grab my arrow tool and I grabbed this Z position on my uh, 3D logo. And if you don't see this, you could just highlight your logo and I'm dragging it up and to the right and that's just making the logo go towards my camera. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going until it disappears. And you might get lucky, you might fly through a letter, or in this case, I'm just barely going under my logo and I'm still gonna grab it and move it a little bit further. Boom. Okay, that automatically should have set a position keyframe. I'm gonna hit U on my keyboard to show all of my animated uh, parameters here. And um, in my, we could basically scrub through and now watch this animation. And I'm also gonna set uh, the uh, length of my animation by coming over here and grabbing this little nub and pulling it over. And then I'm gonna, t I'm gonna hit zero on my keyboard. You could also hit space bar to start to see your uh, animation here. So now you may be seeing, okay, this takes a little bit longer to render than a traditional 3D scene, especially if you're not uh, familiar with rendering in 3D, you know, it, it definitely does take longer than traditional After Effects animation. So what are the ways we could do, what are the things we could do to speed up our workflow so that we don't have to wait this long every time we um, want to see what our animation looks like? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is turn our resolution down. You can go to half res. Uh, in this case, we can go all the way to quarter res because all we're trying to see is the rough animation and the quarter res will speed up render times um, a ton, a ton. You'll see right away, it's much easier to scrub through. And the other thing you could do is hit shift at, while you do a RAM preview. And what that does is render every other frame here. And you may have used that in After Effects before. I use this all the time. So now watch, watch how much faster this animation is going. And we're gonna fix all that graininess and all the, all the weirdness of what this logo looks like um, at the end, but we don't wanna see the final version now because we don't wanna wait that long. Okay, so we have our animation. It's not the prettiest animation, just these linear boring keyframes flying out, but we can make that way better. So the first thing we're gonna do is also add some rotation. 
So let's just experiment and say on the X axis, we're gonna say move it 90 degrees. We're gonna do a, a RAM preview here. And now what do we got? Well, now we have this logo flying out. We got this nice animation happening where it's coming up, up from uh, kind of rotating in like it's flying in like a spaceship from, from over our camera. Let's see what that looks like. And that's pretty cool. You might like that one. You could also experiment and say uh, instead. Now, what I, what I do want to make sure is I'm, I'm on my original keyframe. In this case, I'm going to say negative 90 and see what that looks like. And look, this, this kind of takes over the frame a little bit more. And this is closer to the example you may have seen. And what's nice about this is it catches the light over here. You see it catch the light on that corner? I enjoy that. Okay, so let's stick with this. This, is, this has a pretty cool vibe going on. But the animation is still a little bit boring to me. So we're gonna add some, um, some more interesting keyframes. And in other words, we're going to interpret the speed between these keyframes in a different way. If we look into our graph editor, so I'm just going to select our last two keyframes, click our graph editor. You're going to see what we have is in our speed graph. Um, and you should see the speed graph. If you don't, make sure you click here and uh, make sure that edit speed graph is on. This is my favorite way to animate. And what you want to make sure of is that uh, you don't have these linear keyframes. And to do that, what I what I love to do is grab these these secondary keyframes, the further ones down your timeline, and drag them down to zero. And you can also hold shift, and that's going to snap them to zero. And you're going to see when you let go and kind of pull this move, you're going to get a much more natural looking curve. And all this means is um, up front, your logo is going to animate faster than than at the end. In fact, it'll speed up really fast at the at the front and then it'll ease in at the end. It'll look much more natural. Uh, and this goes for, you know, anything that you animate, cameras or, you know, anything 2D as well. This type of curve adds a lot more energy to the scene. So now you can see it really kind of jumped off the starting gate there and now eased into place much, much better. Loving this already. And in fact, uh, now, as soon as you have a logo animation that you like, um, what I would have you do is uh, experiment with the lighting. Now, right now, um, I just happen to like, now I'm, I'm gonna turn up our resolution here just so we could see the lighting a little bit better. I happen to like the way that our HDR came into the scene. It's like perfectly rotated. But if it doesn't look good to you, here's something you could do. Once you hit R on your EXR, uh, if you're using your own HDR, you could do this as well, and just spin the um, HDR around. Now you can't see it in the viewport, but it's there reflecting on this logo. And if you spin it on the Y axis right here and let go, you're gonna see the render update and you'll get different uh, lighting as the light moves around your logo. So it just as easily could have been rotated toward the front like that. And we're just looking for a beautiful resting place for our light. Now, I like the way that our light worked. I don't think we're going to change it too much. But like I said, depending on your logo or your text, I want you to uh, play with this because it can make a drastic effect. I mean, you're seeing the difference as I rotate this around. So we're, we're, I'm going to go back because I love this look. And now we're going to talk about how we can take this somewhat simple but you know, pretty neat little camera move here and make it look a lot more um, appealing to the eye. Okay, right now all we have is this 3D text. And so how do we start to add the extra things that uh, you could call compositing to help build up this scene into something a little bit more beautiful? Well, to do that, I'm going to drop the this composition into a new composition. So let's call this 3D logo comp. And I just hit enter on my keyboard. I gotta remember to, to say what I'm hitting here. Hit enter on my keyboard and you could type right into it. And then you could drag this into this button right here and it'll make a, um, a new composition with the other composition in it. Okay, so why would we do that? Well, this allows us to do a couple things. It allows us to not worry about any of our 3D layers. 
they're still rendering just fine if we scrub through on this new comp. They're all 3D, they're all rendering, and they're just passing its data in through this comp. What this allows us to do is do something more like a, a traditional comp, which is add our background and add glows and layers and adjustment layers on top of this um, without affecting the original. And it, and it also has another side effect, which is it's faster to render this way. And that's because any uh, anything that's already been rendered in the comp will stay rendered even if you add adjustment layers and stuff on top of it, okay? So let's go to our kind of final position here, something like this, and start to dress this up a little bit, make this a lot more appealing uh, to our eyes. So first thing we need is a background. So let's go to new, uh, solid, bam. And let's just pick a black background. We'll start with that, okay? Nice and boring here to start, but I promise we'll build something fun. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is add a new solid. And uh, this one's gonna be something like a dark blue, eh, not too dark, but we're gonna start to give a little bit of atmosphere to our scene. So go ahead and grab this layer, grab your circle mask, and I want you to just mask roughly around where your logo is. And I'm also holding shift on my keyboard so I can move this circle around. And if I let go of shift, I could scale it up and down. And let's just make something kind of roughly the size. And uh, if it's not behind your logo, you could just move your layer. Now from here, I want you to hit F on your keyboard, F for feather, and crank up the, the mask. We're just kind of creating a little back uh, backdrop for this logo. I'm gonna shrink this down even more. And uh, it's way too bright, so go ahead and hit T for transparency and knock this like way down. I mean, 20, 30%, I mean, it's it's just a little bit of haze. And now you can see your logo is, is kind of popping off the background a little bit more, and it's very subtle. These layers, you can keep them very subtle and they add up uh, as we add more and more of these. In fact, I'm gonna duplicate that layer, move it above our comp, um, I'm sorry, move it above our 3D la layer, and use this as kind of a, a little light glow from the top. And I'm just readjusting my mask here. If you don't see this tool, just hit V on your keyboard and you'll, you'll be able to grab your mask. Make sure that new layer is selected. I'm just making a, a nice little glow that goes on top of our logo. Um, I can go to my transparency. Maybe this one's a little bit brighter and you can also adjust the color as well. Okay, now you may be seeing this right here on YouTube, which is banding. Okay, and you may have seen this in other renders as well that you've tried to do any gradients. And banding happens when there's just not enough color data in your scene to recreate a gradient very smoothly. And you can see I'm getting banding right now, I can see it. And if you see this, here's a fix. So I want you to go to your effects and presets menu. If you don't see it, you can find it under window, but I want you to go find scatter. Scatter, just type it in there and grab the scatter effect and drag it onto the offending layer. Say no, you are not gonna band. I'm gonna instead scatter you around. Just crank this up until the until the banding goes away, okay? And you're gonna see it, it adds a little bit of grain and that's what it's doing. It's, it's adding variation to this color and this will help when it comes to banding and little uh, effects like that. I use that effect all the time. Okay, so it's getting getting there, but we also don't have any uh, lighting effects on the logo itself. So what if you wanna add a little lens glow wherever these glints are gonna happen? Well, on this, you could actually add a glow effect right to your 3D layer. So um, go to your 3D logo comp, or whatever you named it, come up here and just type in glow. And you could double click it or you could just drag it onto the 3D layer itself. And you can see we got glow. That's not quite the glow we're going for. Uh, but instead what I'm gonna do is turn up the glow threshold. And this is just gonna go to brighter and brighter parts of our scene. And it'll allow me to uh, also set the glow radius. And this is gonna make it a little bit more like what I want. I want this like glow around this, but I don't like all that intensity. So I could just knock this way down like 0.2. And then you can duplicate your glow to kind of layer this up. So I'm actually gonna start with more of like a 20 layer, something really minimal. Duplicate it, turn up the glow radius, and then again, uh, maybe turn this up or down as we see fit. So you can see it's starting to blow out these highlights. And if we turn off our, our effects, you could twirl these up, just turn off effects, that'll turn them off. You can see it's a subtle effect, but it's starting to add a little bit of glow 
to that layer. And in, in fact, that might still be a little bit too much. So let's dial this down. And let's go up here. And I'm going to open up this effect, dial this one down too. Really subtle. And you can even animate this to uh, make it more, uh, you know, brighter at the beginning and then less over time. Because look, up front, we got all this glow happening. Okay, so you could play around with that, add some different glows, um, and then go, go back to our 3D comp and open up our logo. We could hit A twice, same as before. I'm just gonna move up so we could see our examples here. And now is a good time to adjust and play with your reflection settings. You saw we really cranked down the reflection sharpness. I don't think we have to go that far down. You can also play with the reflection roll off which in this case will make the uh, reflection different depending on the angle of your object. In this case, without any other lights in our scene, I do like it with a full, with like zero reflection roll off. Uh, and in other videos, we talk about, you know, some of the other settings for 3D layers, but I want you to experiment with this reflection intensity and the sharpness. So I'm also gonna dumb our reflection intensity down, although, uh, we will have to turn our ambient uh, lighting all the way down as well. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to get. These nice little highlights here. They're not as bright as before. And that looks a little bit better to me. I'm going to split the difference and go to 90% reflection. Okay, and now let's set up our final render by adding our uh, final color correction and setting this up for our final render. So go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And we're gonna use curves. I love curves. Drag it onto your adjustment layer. And just, uh, if you're not familiar with curves, um, for now, just follow along and make this nice S curve. What this does is it makes the black parts of your scene more uh, black and the bright parts of your scene a little bit brighter. And you can adjust the contrast in that way, okay? And you can see it's really uh, dial letting us dial in this look. And something else um, you may see me do all the time is go grab our blue channel and tone down our blue a little bit and raise the blue in the in the uh, in the shadow, and it's just enough to um, to to add a little bit more color to that scene. Now, in this case, I think our logo is too dark in general. There's a couple things we could do. We can go back into our 3D comp and try to add lights. But while we're in this compositing comp, we can just go ahead and try to tint this layer slightly brighter. Uh, so let's add a curves to our logo as well. And just crank up the gamma a little bit. And I just that's just me grabbing the middle of this curves and moving it up. I'm gonna go um, below the glow so we don't affect our glow. And you can see now our logo is, um, you know, not quite as black as it was before. So let's turn that off and on. You can see the difference there. You want to check it at different parts of your render. So that's looking pretty good. It might be a little bit too bright, but you could always animate this over time as well. So this is a good frame for us to dial in our final render settings and get this ready for composite. Okay. Um, so how do we clean up this blurry reflection? Well, remember earlier we went to composition, we went to composition settings, we went to 3D render. And we went to our options and we cranked this all the way down. Well, this slider, think of it like this. Down here, your 3D objects will render faster, but with more grain and less detail. And as you turn this up, it's gonna be less and less grain, but it will take longer to render. Now, I tend not to go any higher than around 50%. There are super rare cases where you have to get up into these numbers, but do not default to go up here. In fact, there's even warning signs like for highly reflective or layered scenes, don't do it. This is as high as you should need to go for this type of tutorial. And for most 3D, uh, I don't go too much higher. So let's let's not even go that high. Let's just go to like, you know, 23, 30%, something like that. And as soon as we cl click OK, you're gonna see it'll take a little bit longer to render this frame. And we may have to just kind of cheat it and move forward a frame a little bit here, but wait for it to render. And you can see already this is cleaning up. It's not quite as much as we want, okay? Uh, oh, and I forgot, we don't just have to turn it on here, but we have to turn it on our original comp. 
So go to your original comp, go to composition settings. This is where the 3D is taking place. And this could trip, this trips me up all the time. It just did on this tutorial. Make sure you go to your original comp, go to composition settings, 3D render, options, and turn this up. Let's go to that 30. Bam. Now watch it clean up. Boom right? L way less green, and it's still not perfect. We could still crank it up, but I think for this type of render, we can now just click around, wait for it to render, and see what effects we're getting. Let's see this earlier one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now let's head on into our final comp. Let's look at what this is looking like. And if you're happy with it, set your set your out frame. You don't probably don't have to render the whole thing. I'm gonna go use my uh, keyframe or timeline line here and hit N on my keyboard to end my animation right here. And then we're gonna we're just gonna render this out. And to do that, all you need to do is hit Shift Command backslash. And uh, if you don't know which one's backslash, it's the one with the question mark on it on your keyboard. Shift Command backslash. And you do that in the comp that you want to render, and it will bring it into the uh, render queue. You could, of course, you can come in and name it. Uh, and then you can also get your settings. You could render out an H.264. If you want something higher res, you could change all that here. And when you're ready, uh, click render. And uh, and then don't forget that you know 3D stuff does take a little bit longer to render, but that's why we waited until the end to really crank up those settings. So if you end up using this effect with your logo, I'd love to see the results down in the comments. If you have any questions about 3D and After Effects, don't forget to ask them down below. Um, there's some really powerful ways that you could take 3D objects without any plugins, without anything else, and create some really fun stuff. Thanks again for watching everybody. And don't forget if you're interested in learning more about 3D animation inside of After Effects, don't forget to head on over to our site and download this scene file and other 3D scene files all made with After Effects. We're gonna link it up down below and right here on YouTube as well. And with that, I just wanted to thank you once again for watching our tutorials. We have plenty more coming here this summer and I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye everybody. So this is, this is like what your logo is doing. <laughs> You have to provide your own sound. You could use these sound effects, I guess. Bing! That's like Snoop.